Welcome everybody to our um, City Commission regular meeting of December 2nd. We'll call this meeting to order. Nikki, would you please uh, lead us in the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Fairwood, please rise. Yes. <coughs> Let us all take a moment to reflect together, each according to our own individual beliefs and intentions, and offer a moment of silence for the loss of community activist and volunteer Melba Rylett. May Melba's loved ones in the Dunedin community feel comfort in this time of loss and strength to face the next day. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I just want to thank Commissioner Gao, too, for bringing that to my attention. Thank you. <coughs> And Mayor, yes. Um, I don't know if we've done that, but we have, have we also commented that uh, Don Schaefer, former commissioner, that's, passed yeah, away. I, I didn't know if we yeah. did that or not, but you know, yeah. and obviously a father of our employee and good guy. So yeah, I just didn't right. for sure. Thank you for sharing that too. Okay, we don't have any presentations, so now is the time for citizen input. If the item is. Um, on the agenda, you'll have an opportunity to speak to that, except for the Sterling Hotel, which has to be operated under um, a hearing process, but I'll speak more to that later. So anyone wishing to speak on any subject that is not already on the agenda? <coughs> Thank you. Welcome. Can you give us your name and address for the record, please? My name is Jim Aubin. I'm at 1309 Fairway Drive, Dunedin. Welcome. You've got Hi. three minutes up there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here just to, to express a little disappointment in the way this, uh, certain processes have been handled. Um, this started, it was about a fence, and now it's not. Now it's about the way we were treated during the whole process of trying to get an appeal done on the fence. <clears throat> we are not very good with interacting with the city, so we got a lawyer and we got an attorney and said, could you please interact with the city and dot the T, or cross the T's and dot the I's, do it right. So over a period of five or six months, the attorney went back and forth with the city. city people. We actually spoke to Jen for once on the phone. Um, at the end of all this, we got a letter. It says from, uh, from Nikki. It says, our firm provides city attorney legal services to the city of Dunedin. We are in receipt of your correspondence to Joan, blah, blah, blah. First, please note that the pursuant to the rules of professional regulation, the floor of bar, your request should have been sent to my attention. This is after five months, six months of trying to interact with the city. We get this, okay? Please note that this requirement do not communicate with my client about matters which involve my firm's representation of the city without our consent or inclusion. If there is any question about whether a matter involves our representation, please do not hesitate to ask. With regard to the substance, your correspondence does not present any proper appeal under the city codes or ordinances as your client is not an applicant for any permit. The code sections cited in your in your basic area in the appeal is not an administrative procedure rendering the city board of appeals an arbiter of private disputes over the issuance of the permit. <clears throat> Please further advise that the Florida Supreme Court has made it abundantly clear that the matters complained of in your correspondence are private disputes and the city has no liability in your client for issuing a permit, blah, blah, blah. The reason I'm here is because it took six months for your city to, to, to do this. They could have done it the first month. We had a meeting with some, some junior people. They said, here, fill out this paper, and it's an appeal, and get it to the city, pay us $1,500, and we'll process the appeal. We then said, that sounds kind of weird, but anyway, let's talk to Jennifer, and see what she has to say. So we talked to Jennifer and one of the people who approved the permit, and they said, Fill out an appeal, go ahead, we'll go ahead and process it, and we'll talk to you when you fill out the appeal. 
So that's when we got the lawyer. That was in June. Okay, so um, I'm sorry. Uh, your name, your, what was your name again? Jim. Um, Jim. I was listening so intently I didn't write it down. My apologies. So um, let us have the city manager work with you on this situation because we don't have all of the all the facts here, but she has this sure. document. Sure. And um, if you can give her your phone number there, we'll, we'll have... go through it again. As again, I don't think there's anything that's going to happen on this fence. And based on the communication from the city attorney, I don't think anything's going to be resolved about this fence. The issue is not the fence anymore. The issue is, why did why it take so five long? or six months sure. for the city to finally say, oh, by the way, we're going to hand this over. Somebody handed it over to the attorney for some reason because yeah. they were tired of talking to our attorney. And she shut him down. So he's, well, in, he's in the background, but... So let's, let's have the city manager work with our city attorney and try to determine what steps were taken and if there were any missteps taken that need to be corrected for future cases. And we appreciate you bringing this to our attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else want to come forward and speak to any item <clears throat> that is not already on the agenda? Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Kathy Aubin. I actually live at the same address as Jim, 1309 Fairway Drive. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to start with the definition of an ordinance. It is a law set forth by a governmental authority, a piece of legislation enacted by a municipal authority, a local law. For example, city ordinance banning smoking in restaurants. This ordinance is... oh approximately 150 pages long. It deals with everything from how many toilets to be in a bar to signs and to fences. It says, for side or rear yards abutting St. Joseph Sound or a named lake in Dunedin, the fence shall be no more than 48 inches in height and no more than 50% opacity. An equivalent combination of fence, wall, landscape, berm, a retaining wall may be utilized to achieve the maximum possible fence height. However, in no case shall it contain the combined height of the structures exceeding the minimum provisions. Now, oddly, it comes along with come on, we're in page, a diagram of how fences should be done on city property that abuts a, a named lake. We are on Lake Sandra or... St. Joseph Sound clearly says at the bottom here, fencing cannot exceed four feet in length and 50% opacity in the rear and side yards abutting St. Joseph Sound or a named lake. This wall that the neighbors put up is six feet high. It's made of solid vinyl. And it's just wrong. Uh, and then if we want to appeal it, we have this form to fill out and you fill it out, you make up a letter, you have surveys done, title work done, and then, oh, by the way, give us $1,500, which is not refundable. And So you're not appealing your own, your, a decision for you, you're appealing what somebody else has done is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So again, I, I think the best thing to do is get you guys in a room with our city manager and maybe our attorney or, or whoever she, our city manager deems appropriate to try to walk you through it. Okay. Because when we spoke to some people, they, they had never even heard of this form. They knew of the form, but never has anybody ever applied through it. Gotcha. And I think the $1,500 might have something to do with it. Well, and, and I, they had no idea what happens if the city was found and negligent. The, and the appeal that you're referring to when you go for the Board of Adjustment and Appeal, we have one of our former members of that board <laughs> sitting right here in the audience. Um, that is more of an appeal of a city decision for your own, I believe, versus versus you appealing us to a decision we made for someone else. That's what I believe, but I can't say that for sure. That's why I say it's really important for you all to get in a room with our city attorney, so, I mean our city manager, and try to walk through exactly what the issue is. I'd be happy to provide some brief comments in response once public comment is closed, Mayor, if it will help the situation. But sure. um, I'd like to 
that I don't want to disrupt your meeting. You can continue to take public comment, and if the commission has any questions, I'm available. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to come forward and speak to any item that is not already on the agenda? <clears throat> Get city, city clerk. Thank you. All right, Eric Curtis, slip number two, Dunedin Marina. Just want to bring up a few items that have happened over the summer, which are good. So, uh, over the summer, slip 180 has become a conversation point with the locals that frequent the marina and the pier. During the one week period this summer, the large vessel in slip 180 left for a trip. It was amazing that nearly everyone that walked by that week commented on how nice the view was of the intercoastal. They said that they used to always come down and sit on the seawall and enjoy the view. The golf cart committee expressed the same view. The vessel in, 80, in 180 was originally smaller, but during the new harbor master switch, a larger vessel showed up. I would like to ask the city marina, I know this is not the marina, but oh. that, uh, they could move to a slip in 180, make it available, so that it would be, uh, let me get back to where I was. I would like to ask the city marina to look into making a space on ADOC for a permanent home. We have no issues with the owner of the boat, but think it would be on ADOC, it would be allow safe passage for slips one and two, along with multiple boats that pass at the same time. I love the marina and the atmosphere it creates. Unfortunately, I think there's favoritism within tenants. The rules are designed to make it equal for all tenants. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to be a bit, a bit redundant, and perhaps I should just discuss this with the city manager. Is this regarding the fence? Yes, yeah. it is. Yes. That's, I think all of you just need to meet with the yes. city manager. Okay. Thank you. Because we can't solve it right here. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to stop you from speaking, but. No, no. There's no good. I don't want to waste anything. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. My name is Carolyn James. And what do you need? My address? Mm-hmm. 2470 Bayshore Boulevard, Dunedin. 34698. So I'm going to read to you because it's easier for everyone. There's a couple of safety issues at the Dunedin Marina. This came up during the MAC meeting and they sent me here because they said it's out of their scope. Um, the park area and parking lot near the pier are heavily congested and each day there is a near accident in the area. It is extremely busy. Vehicles and pedestrians are in danger of damage and injury. It looks like a demolition derby at sunset. Toddlers are spinning around in circles looking at the sky while mom's trying to take a picture of the water while at the very same time 18-wheeler mat trucks are backing down the lane trying to park and unload. Along with the other 50 to 100 vehicles who are distracted looking for a spot to park. These big trucks should be made to use the hotel parking lot where they're taking their loads inside and they can park in the hotel. It's a recipe for disaster. So the solution is, is that we're asking for a roundabout down there to keep the traffic moving in one direction so people are not backing up and running all over the place. and in every single different kind of direction. There's plenty of room, and then you could use like a perm, it's called a perma paver solution or something, so it like slows down the traffic. It's not like a pavement road. Maybe a few trees might have to be moved. I was gonna send some pictures, but I haven't had time because I've had the flu. The second safety issue is the mouth of the marina. There's a big three foot tall boat there that when the um, what is the boat called? The ferry is trying to back out 
and the little dinghy boats and the fire boat and the police boat, they cannot be seen behind the big boat that is there. And then the boats coming down the fairway of the marina and heading out. I don't know if you know about boats, but they don't have any brakes. So it is just a mess of boats bumping and running around. And, and then here we have like the parade that is coming up in the next couple of days. And you're going to have boats coming and going through there. There's not enough room to have a 20 foot wide boat sitting there. Okay. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. Um, Jennifer will look into those safety issues. Anyone else? Benny? No, go ahead. My name is Ross Ellis, my wife, Debbie. Uh, we're here, uh, there's a house in Dunedin that had a lot of fines on it for the last, I don't know, maybe a couple of years, but uh, I was told by the uh, home, association, uh, home association uh, of this uh, neighborhood that the liens were dropped on it now because there was no way we could pay that amount of liens. So we uh, got estimates on everything, talked to a lawyer today that says she could draw up a deed and we want to make sure we're handling the right steps to purchase this. And she said, you know, I would have to pay off the taxes that are owed. I think it was three or four years taxes and <clears throat> any liens that may be on this house. And I've got, it's got black mold. They believe the uh, Mr. Vallon uh, died because of the black mold when they got his body out and the sheriff took pictures. It was just black mold throughout the whole home. So everything in there has to come out and it's all the way to the studs and then rebuild the house. So I uh, just want to ask. So, yeah. our, so again, I'm going to say our city manager, if you can give her your contact information. And who is that? Okay. Uh, yeah, Jennifer right Bramley. Here, yeah, I have my card. If yes, you can. can I get leave yes, this please. folder with you? Yes. And then she yes. can help you figure out how to walk through all of that. Thank you very much. Pictures and we have this okay. There you Ross, go. Thank you. If you what was your last name? I didn't catch it. I'm Ellis, E-L-L-I-S. We live in, I didn't get my address, uh, Odessa, Florida, 12526. Tyler Run Avenue in Odessa. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And day. thanks for being willing to purchase it. Yes. Appreciate uh, that. According to all the neighbors, that's what they're saying. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate, well, we appreciate that. And we're, we're happy to work with you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Come on, Vinny. Like yeah. <laughs> I'll just start off by saying I can help you too. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you got a lot of work tomorrow. Yeah, big really? First of all, everybody, happy Thanksgiving. Mayor, Thank Vice you. Mayor, Commissioners, and staff. Uh, Vinnie Luisi, Director of the Dunedin Historical Museum. I came up because I wanted to do several thanks and just announce. Last month in November, we had a very successful, the best since I've been curator, a curator slash director of the Dunedin Museum at the Kellogg's Mansion. And we had 187 paid uh, guests that came to that event, which was very successful. Uh, beneficial for the knowledge of what was going on with the mansion uh, and we were very proud of that and that wouldn't have happened unless some of you jumped in at the time when there was a big controversy and city manager I want to thank you, thank you. city attorney I want to thank you for stepping in madam mayor I'd like to thank you for getting involved on that situation and all the commission is kind of putting input on that this event would not have happened if you guys had not stepped in and made some initiative to the project. I also just wanted to say that I want to thank the family because David and Chrissy Wank, if they didn't say yes to what you agreed to, this never would have happened. And uh, finally, after we had that, we had an auction. We're still waiting for the final results. But again, I have to say this has been a very successful fundraiser for our year. Especially with COVID, we didn't have a chance to do any other major fundraising, so this helped us through the year. But finally, the last week uh, after the auction, I had over 350 members of the community who could come and visit the mansion and see why we could not save it. I gave a 90-minute tour three times a day for six days with over 350 members of the community who paid to come and visit the museum and understand why that 
museum, the mansion is how it is and why it can't be saved. And with that, I would just want to say that we, the board members, and myself want to thank all of you, the family, and because I did all those tours and we thought that this was an important project, I, the board, personally I want to present to our liaison for the Historical Preservation Committee, Ms. Deborah Kynes, a check for the Pinellas Community Foundation for the 3D project that the museum totally supports. Thank you. Awesome, That's, That's awesome. Yeah. I think our community got a better appreciation of what that mansion is all about. So thank you. Thank you. Well, can so you much. can you tell us how yeah. much you were able to raise we, altogether? Do you have an estimated uh, after number? After our initial costs with ticket pricing, we 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 raised roughly thirty-seven thousand dollars. The auction is somewhere between forty and forty-five, but they still have to take their commission out. Right. So again, in my twenty-seven thank years so as much. director, this is probably. Uh, 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 it's like our garden party. I've right. never reached that kind of goal. So thank That's you. That's great. Thank you, Vinny. Um, I'm going to announce it's $3,400 that they have given. Thank you so much to the digitization project and so that we can now do a digitalization so that you can go and you can see with the um, oculars, Oculus, you, you can what actually like see what it was mansion. like when it's gone. And Commissioner, I did tours, one, to make that acknowledgement of what everybody knows and to further that project. Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank you, Benny. Thank you, Mr. Museum. Anyone else wish to come forward and give citizen input on anything that's not already on the agenda? No? Okay. Um, Mayor, can I just have a few sure, moments to just respond to some of the things that were said? First, I want to respond to the comments that Vinny just made to thank you because it's not often when you sit in this chair or this chair or even this chair that you get to hear about the results of the late nights and long hours that are sometimes put into these time-sensitive matters. So I just want to thank you for telling us how it turned out um, because not we don't always get to hear that. Um, with regard to some of the other comments that were made regarding the letter that I sent on October 1st of 2021, it sounds like with regard to timing, the primary concern or the primary issue seems to be between the, um, uh, the, the people who spoke between us today and their attorney, really, when it comes to timing, because I was not contacted by their attorney at any point during this process. At, um, as it was pointed out, it wasn't until the request for appeal of a building permit issued to a neighbor was filed on September 2nd, and I was forwarded that request for an appeal on September the 7th that I ever became aware of this matter at all. Um, had their attorney contacted me at once at any point during these apparently months of meetings, I would have said the exact same thing about how the um, city code and the board of Appe the functions and duties of the board of appeals, which as the mayor pointed out, serves as a board um, authorized to take appeal and make interpretations as to applications when you are the applicant or when you are the property owner. Um, the entirety of my letter was not read, and so I do just want to read one other um, portion of it. Um, the code sections that were cited in the request for appeal were pointed out, and by the way, this letter was in response back to Mr. Coleman Esquire, the, the property owner's attorney. This letter did not go to the individuals who spoke here tonight directly, so I'm writing to another lawyer. And I do have a professional obligation to also ask them, please follow our professional obligations. If you're communicating with the city on a matter that involves my representation, pick up the phone, give me a call, let me know what's going on. Because I might say, no big deal, work with staff. Or I might say, you know what? What you're doing does not present a proper appeal under the, under the code and, and it stops right there. But that's the purpose of that rule governing our profession. That's not a city rule, that's set by the Florida Bar, and it applies when you get your bar license and you swear in and you after you take the bar exam and graduate from law school. Well, I, let me just interject. I think that explains a lot because your communication wasn't to these folks. Absolutely It not. was to the attorney. I was writing back to the attorney right. and asking him to please keep me informed of matters that he has before my client, especially if he's going to be communicating about them, um, because that's that's our rules, and it's not to stymie things. Like I said, if 
if staff's rocking along, we say, great work with staff, they're rocking along. Um, but the, the bigger thing, and, and that is also why your um, mayor, when I, when I pointed out um, both that, you know, the authority of the Board of Appeals, I'm talking again to an attorney, as well as, um, you know, to th this is a, um, a private dispute between two property owners. I also pointed out that the administrative procedure regarding the city's Board of Appeals does not render the Board of Appeals an arbitrator of private disputes. And that's the primary reason why I wanted to communicate that back clearly to the attorney and then also let to the extent then some attorneys think well great i'll just go sue you city for the issuance of the permit out of a courtesy i provided the citation to the florida supreme court opinion which would render that case um, unsupportable under florida law and so i provided that as a courtesy i provided it all within less than 30 days of even being informed on the matter and so i did just want to let the commission know that um some of, of that additional background so um thank well, and you I for don't, the and opportunity. just to interject i don't think that there i think it's the time that it took and i, I previous I don't think it's necessarily you that they had the concern. It's well, it's all the time previous to that. And I just want to make one more comment on that, Mayor, because um, the um, that may have been it, but the response is, is accurate. It's an accurate recitation of, of the law in Florida. But I did hear for the first time tonight that their application fee was not refunded, and I've already sent a note to the city manager that that absolutely should be refunded. Those application fees exist for the... Um, for the purpose of providing the notice and the advertisements and everything that leads to the hearing and all the administrative burdens and process within that. So I advise the city manager that that $1,500 application fee should be refunded. And so I think if there's anything left for the city to do on this matter, and I know there was a lot, is would be to issue that refund for the $1,500 application fee. But beyond that, um, I hope that helps answer some of the questions. I hope that addresses, um, I can't address you directly because you're represented by um, councils and their council is not here yet, but this is a public meeting, and so it's out there that I've advised that the fifteen hundred dollars be refunded. Okay. There was, there was no fee. There was no fee charged to us. It was told in the meeting, the original meetings with the city. Okay. That there okay. Would be, but there was well, no okay. Thank you. But I still, I, I think that you can still have a conversation with them and look at the code that they were referring to in regards to the fence and have the fence inspected to see if it meets that code. Well, I'd I like to discuss with staff as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. And I do believe that staff had concluded that the permit wasn't issued in error, but that's the, that we can that's fine. double check that again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I think that's it. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. You don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. We don't mind if you leave. <laughs> No. Nope. Yeah. No, we got that. Yeah. No, we get it. I got it. Thank you so much. No, I know it is. I can tell. I can tell. I get it. Just as an FYI, you have to remember. Well, you weren't you weren't here, Jennifer or Nikki, but we changed a lot of regulations. You would know this, and so would you to protect the view of the water. So I bet you if you go back and look at whenever those fence things were done, it was to protect the view of the water for people who are around it, that you can't block your neighbor's view. Because there was a whole drama. Yeah, there was a lot of drama over that. So this is nothing unusual, but we changed certain things in both our comp plan and in our code to accommodate for that. So. I just want you to have that when you're looking and talking to the staff. Did you say, though, that the permit was issued in error? No. No, no that it was not. Staff it was not. It was not. Before I, I, the okay, first gotcha. thing I check is, was this a permit issued in error? Okay. Meaning a permit that shouldn't have been issued even if it was. So, um, And that's the first check. But even for a permit issued in error, that Florida Supreme Court case that I said yeah. it applies. But, let's, <laughs> but I, but let's I still want to make sure that, that it was right Mayor, first, and that was the first yeah. step. Staff spent a lot of time on this. Gotcha. So, and I talked to them personally, as they said. So, yeah. okay. um, but Can I, I want to talk to them. They're no longer in the room. So. And I appreciate yeah. that, Mayor. And that's a good point. Um, but that's also, again, mm -hmm. things that exist in the private space as between two property owners. I get and, no. And I so, totally, yeah. I totally get that point. I do. Um, okay. But I know we don't usually do that. But I've, it seemed like no, no. Just, I just clarify. No, I appreciate it. that. So, yeah. No problem. Um, okay. So action items. 
There has been a request to table the first reading of the Sterling Hotel um, application 21-09, located at 380 Main Street and 830 Douglas. Jennifer, did you have anything you wanted to say about it? I, I don't have anything further to add, Mayor, apart from that the request to table was to a date uncertain. Right, and tabling is uncertain. Correct. It's not a postponement, and this is at the request of the applicant. That's correct. Correct. So what that means is that before there's any, this is brought back before you, the advertisements will be done so that all the public can know to come and appear at the quasi-judicial hearing at that time. Okay. Okay. Can I have a motion to table? So moved. Second. Commissioner Gao, or Vice Mayor Gao and Commissioner Franey. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move on to the annual selection of vice mayor. Um, we have uh, December every year, we follow our, our rules and regs, um, our nomination process, and um, we am required to explain it to you. So I, I will open the floor for nominations. Each member of the commission upon recognition by the chair shall have the right to place a nomination for the honorary office of vice mayor the name of any commissioner um, before nominations are closed. Nominations do not require a second. When all nominations have been made, the chair will so announce and declare nominations closed. If only one commissioner is nominated, that person will be declared by the chair to be elected and shall serve until a successor is elected. If more than one nomination has been made, this, uh, the selection of vice mayor will be accomplished by written ballot. Balloting shall continue until one nominee receives a simple majority. If no nominations are made and if no nominee is first elected by a majority vote after three ballots have been taken, the commissioner with the longest term of continuous service shall be deemed selected. In this event, there are two or more commissioners, in the event there are two or more commissioners of equal continuous service, then selection shall be by lot. Having said all of that, with that process, can I have nominations? I would like to nominate um, Commissioner Kynes. Second. Okay, we don't need a second. Are there any other nominations? Congratulations, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you, you, you you're Thank going you. out with a bang. Thank you. All right. Don't even have to take a vote. Very nice. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Uh, now we have the review of the, the annual review of our commission rules and procedures. Um, did you take a look, um, Nikki? You looked at it over and you were okay with everything, nothing was concerning. Did you look at the quasi-judicial process because you usually have changed, you've usually changed some of mine. So I, I don't have any comments generally usually about your rules of procedure but because the they're your rules and they're yours to set how you want them. The only recommendation that I had, Mayor, was on the um, quasi-judicial hearings and you yeah, all you have been doing that. this so there's yeah. nothing wrong with the way you've been doing it but it doesn't explicitly state when you provide for cross-examination mm -hmm. uh, by by the parties and okay. so that would be my one recommendation would be just to show that because then it makes a nice little clean yeah. list that you can mm -hmm. give to the participants in the hearing and they know exactly when each item is going to occur but you all have been providing for cross-examination there's no issue with the way you've been running yeah. your quasi-judicial hearings, but it would make it a little bit more clear if it was in the resolution about when you accept that, um, when you do that cross-examination time. And are, is everybody okay with just allowing her to give whatever the language is to Rebecca and Rebecca can, because I, I don't want you to have to wordsmith it this second. We can approve right. it based on what your recommendation is. Well, and I don't, I think the resolution that's in front of you right now is the resolution from last year. It is. So this, what we can do is draft it to bring, because we'll have to bring. Oh, you'll have to bring it back. We can't resolutions just, have okay, to be gotcha. introduced in writing. So we'll introduce a 2021 resolution, and I can add that um, okay. note into the quasi judicial hearings. And under that quasi judicial, since that's, mm -hmm. I don't do the proponents and the opponents because I usually we do the cards. That's not a legal requirement. So okay. if the commission does not want to keep that and that's not been your practice I, and I, would I don't recommend do it that way because that it can be uneven and very 
jading, I think, sometimes. So I that's why I don't do it. It's not a legal requirement to go in any particular order during the public or, he hearing portion okay. of the of that. So if that's not the process, especially too, if that's not the process that's been used, then it, it may hasn't. be better just Are to take. Are you guys okay with just taking that? The order. The opponents and, I mean, we still have the public hearing. hearing. I know that we've not been doing that. I kind of like it. Myself personally, it just it's easy for people to understand and follow. But if if the group uh, wants to continue doing it the way we do it, then we should take that out. So it generally, I what I do is the cards, and I try mm -hmm. to mix them up so it's yes, sort of fair and balanced when you're hearing it versus all one opinion against all another. I just feel it's more <laughs> fair. I think it's more fair because otherwise, you know, whoever goes last, yeah, they always feel like they got the better. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, if it gets to be a long night, then less people are going to listen to the people that get up there last. But yeah. Okay. I agree. Well, yeah, this is one of, that's a your call. So, okay. um, and, but I will leave that asterisk in there because I think that is an important, that is actually a legal important portion for due process that no, no, no. The, oh, the asterisk definitely needs to stay there because we do, we do that for all public. Well, and I was going to say, I actually think it's, if you say for her until a second time until all desiring to I actually think there's in a quasi judicial hearing you you have your time and there's no second time yeah there is no second time from the pub you know because otherwise you'd have to provide that same second time Aren't opportunity to, to every person who spoke so if that would be the only thing is to include that you know um i, I would say actually this that that after you spoke you won't won't be heard a second time but that's um well I, I think when we do or the public could. hearings, well, I was going to say you could, Mayor, you as just long move as you that under public in. hearings, and it does. It actually, it says that under public hearings, right. number seven, no member of the public will be heard mm -hmm. for a second time until person, persons desiring to speak, have been heard. That's mm -hmm. not the quasi judicial. So and I think you could take it out altogether. Uh, oh, that's it. No, that's in the okay. That's in the quasi judicial hearing portion as well. So you're, I know, but I'm saying you're saying if I'm going to let one person speak second, I have to let everybody. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not going to let somebody speak. Second. Okay. Well, then it's best that we just take that language out, so we yeah. don't give the perception that there will be that second opportunity. Right. Okay. That's the only comments that I had. You all made some good tweaks last year, I think, that made it more clear about your work sessions as well as the ability for two of you to call a special meeting having to occur at this public meeting. So there right. wasn't any confusion that that cannot be done outside of the public space. Okay. Yeah. That's, Did that you was have um, something you want to change? I had one, uh, John, are you talking to me or John? You. Um, I just, I'm just asking for a clarification. It says, um, it clearly says one speaker is given three minutes and then it reads the record, well, and then it says, but if five people present sign for somebody else to speak, but the record is unclear how long one person with five signatures Ten of people, minutes. but it's not in there. It doesn't stay up there. It oh, it doesn't? Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, it's 10 minutes. It is 10 minutes. So if we want it 10, it should stay. Yeah, we should, we should add that in there. Because that's what the card says. Yes. Wow, exactly. that vice mayor, she's on it already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All over it. Okay. Anything else? John, did you have any changes? Um, I do, and forgive me, I'm having a problem getting this up onto here, so I, 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 can't, I, can't look at, I can't look at it. Um, so, uh, but I have some notes. Okay. So um, I brought this, I've actually, I brought this up before in another way, but when, in the very beginning when we define who's heading up the meetings, et cetera, um, it would seem to me that can't see it quick enough, but it, it would seem to me like we would say that the chair runs the meeting, okay, as opposed to the mayor runs the meeting, because when the mayor doesn't run the meeting, then somebody else runs the meeting, and then we get on, all caught up in that language. So whoever is the chair of the meeting, the thing should apply to that. You I see? think it does, though, doesn't it? Well, I, I think it's, it... Because it, it like under definition, it says mayor shall mean designated chair. Right, but, and so now you have another designated chair when, when somebody else runs the meeting, okay? So the mayor, the mayor is, is going to run the meeting. So it's just a definition, um, and if you read through it, it just reads better if you do it the other way. To me, it reads better. It's just, it's not a legal issue. 
um, in my opinion, although it, it could get a little shaky in some spot in here, and I can't remember where I put an asterisk by, but. Um, so it says for uh, the most seniority shall be the designated chair. Okay, so now we got another designated chair. And then as it reads through, it just adds to some confusion, in my opinion. If nobody else saw that, I, I apologize. I can't get it. I couldn't get it. Yeah, up. and I can't, I don't, I'm reading through it real quick, and I don't, I don't even see where it's mentioned except under the, yep. under the definition. Well, the the one the part that you all talked about last year was under the special under being called because that's the part where and that was when you added mayor as elected official, not as chair. Um, that's on pay, that's in types of meetings B number three. So that was added last year um, to I think account for the fact that mayor as defined in your exhibit A. And I agree with you, John, by the way, or Commissioner Torng, I'm just jumping in to address it, but no, this please. isn't really a legal issue. I just yep. remembered the change you all made last year, which was to make that specification under that the, how the mayor make, the mayor is the only one who can singularly, as the elected official under the charter, call a special meeting. The other ways a special meeting can be called are as listed, the city manager or two members of the commission in the sunshine. But um, so the definitions I don't think with that addition present any legal issues but this is you know to the commission if you wanted to flip that and say chair throughout and only mayor when you're talking about the mayor elected position that's certainly to your option but I don't think there's a, a legally deficient issue after the correction you all made last year specifying the special meetings to me if but I that's, made this is this is what, to you, what yeah. she just said it just makes it much more understandable to me when I read it it's less less confusion but are you are you wanting to change the definition is that the section that number no, one? I, yeah I think what I think what the Commissioner Tornga is suggesting is instead of saying mayor throughout this document it shall doesn't be the chair though. it doesn't say mayor. I just went through it I yep. don't see mayor almost anywhere well there is well, a, like they, even in under general a there's a the mayor will call for a motion to extend the mayor there's has, a few places maybe scheduled well, yeah, that's what the official. Well, I think what you're saying is you're using two different, um, uh, two different languages for the same thing, and you want it all synced. Exactly. So who's ever running the meetings, the chair. So everything that happens through there is done by the chair, whoever that chair is, and, and usually it's the mayor. But if it weren't, I that, see the chair. Yeah, so they, I see it under A, okay. Right, and it's also, I mean, it's under F, under annual events, then the capital is, capitalized term chair is also used. But, um, and then throughout some of the procedures where, like for example, Mayor, when we were just talking about the quasi-judicial procedures or the public gotcha. hearing procedures, it, it says the item will be announced by the mayor. The mayor has flexibility. So, you know, I think that's okay. where you're really the chair and okay. so maybe that was the, the observation, with that. Commissioner Tornga. Do I have that right? I'm fine with that, except you can't change the who can call a special meeting because that's that's by no, that's right. in the charter, and that wouldn't change. I think the only thing would be to change actually in the def chair shall mean mayor, and in the mayor's absence, the vice mayor. Yeah, you or need the to mayor. leave that there because right. it tells you how it that tells happens. You the order, the I don't want to say the pecking okay. order, but it tells yep. you who has the gavel. If you're not here and if the vice mayor's not here. Right. So Okay, I'm fine with that. And it, you're gonna give us a red line version of yeah. this so we can mm -hmm. see. Because I mean I don't have time to go back through all eight pages, but yeah. we'll look at it then. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have something else, John? Um, yes, I, I did. Okay. And 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 if this is if this is our intent, I I understand it totally. But I've heard I've heard it said another way, and I just want to make sure that this was the intent. I believe this is the intent under town hall meetings. Under town hall meetings, it says, is to allow for interaction between the public, staff, and elected officials. Um, so that w whether the interaction occurs or not, um, we can choose not to have the interaction if we wish, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, it says they, 
Town hall meetings are held on an as-needed basis. They are for the purpose of hearing from the public on a predetermined on predetermined topics and to allow for interaction between the public staff and elected officials. No official action is taken. I mean, you wouldn't have a town hall just to interact, but you would have the town hall to kind of what we just did with the ARPA. We just had several town halls with the ARPA funds. So you're hearing from them. You don't like the way the, you don't like the word interaction? No, no, not, not at all. Um, just the clear definition of, of what's occurring here, and, I don't, and, if, and if we don't want to have, for example, elected officials <clears throat> interacting, okay, other than just listening, then, and, and we say, we, you know, we have stated that before. Yeah, that I, we're at this I understand, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, in those town halls, it was said right from the start, it, the, the commission is here, they're we're going to be listening to you, we're not, I mean, it's kind of set out that we're not going to be going back and forth or giving our opinion we're mainly listening. I mean, it's not right, like we can't the, interject once in a while. Cause but when you say interaction, yeah. I mean, if you remove that and say we will not interact, it almost feels like I, I can't talk to anybody there. Uh, yeah, I, and that's what I don't I, I want get to your go. Point, but I, I do get your point, but I think I think we all understand. Oh, we may understand it, but somebody else may not. Uh, so there's, there's an easy... I don't have it with me, but there's an easier way to say that. I have my notes, but I didn't write, write that down in, in my notes. Yep. But yep. so, for example, for example, who's ever who's ever heading up that meeting uh, will de may determine uh, how the, how the meeting is going to be conducted. I'm well, fine with that. Think. Okay. So she may say, mm -hmm. in this case, the city manager may say we're going to have a town hall meeting, and at this town hall meeting, as she has said before, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're looking for your input, and and the elected officials that are in here are simply going to listen, and, and that's great. I'm, I'm fine with that if that's what we've decided to do. Rebecca? Um, a number six is actually listening sessions are held on an as-needed basis. These meetings are held to hear from the public on one single issue. Generally, there is a facilitator, either internal or external, who will guide the conversation. And most of the meeting is reserved for public feedback. No official action is taken. So I would consider those more of listening sessions. Yeah, because there is because a town hall meeting. We have there, done there. two different things. Really, what we did... It was a listening session. It was a listening session so, and not a town hall, so even though we called it. So the second one, we really ought to call it then a listening session rather than a town hall because the town hall, um, folks may be expecting us to say something or, or to hear something from us, <coughs> and we don't. And I think there could be some confusion there. And that's all. It's just real simple. Yeah. I mean, I read it, and so I'm just giving my input. Well, I think the that's listening all. session covers what you're saying. Ex ex oh, exactly. Yeah, so name but the town hall, you it. could, you might have some interaction at some. Well, point. and you know, when I think about the ARPA thing, I mean, we we didn't, we weren't part of the presentation, no. we weren't part of the discussion, but we had lots of interaction, kind of as people were leaving or right. coming, or you know, people grabbed me. I'm sure they grabbed you guys, you know, just to chat after, you know, after it was over. So, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a, that's, a, that's really a listening right. session. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah. we did it proper because she said, "Hey, at, right. this, right. at this meeting, we're not going to." But I right. thought, "Hey, let's just call it. Let's just right. call it what it is." And so then it, it escapes. Because yeah. yeah. some people think what a town hall meeting is. Oh yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah you know something. Right. I, you're yeah. absolutely yeah. right. So they come oh, to a right. town hall meeting, and we don't have a town hall meeting. Okay. We have a listening, listening session. So we so should. We probably should have called it a listening session, but. We'll know better next time. Well, if, if I can, and maybe it's in there and I'm not seeing it, but on your listening session, it never really explicitly states that the elected officials are only listening. Like that there's no interaction with <gasps> Well, <clears throat> no, but it doesn't say it there, but it does say it under town hall that there will be or could be interaction. Right, because those are two different meeting types, so... Yeah, but do we want to limit ourselves? I don't want to do that. I don't want to say because I, I don't know what subject it is. It says it in the proactive, meaning like there's a facilitator inside or outside that's going to be leading it. So if you read that, you don't come expecting to have the town hall commission, you know, commission up front or whatever. But again, I wouldn't. Ha I would hate to say we're not going to interact because there's informal interaction. And it yeah. has to seem more to. I think we just need to title whatever it is correctly. Or, or, or when she wants to, or in this case, we all agreed, and so she simply said, hey, we're not going to have any interactions. Yeah. Yeah. But it'd just be easy if we just called those listening sessions. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. 
Right. But you don't want to do away <clears throat> with the two different. No, 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 no. I think we should keep. You no, just, just want a clarification. You're just saying yeah. when when we call these, be very particular Careful. as to which one it is. Well, I've been to town hall meetings that are a little. Uh, yeah. Sort of that people really expect to communicate yeah. effectively. Gotcha. Anything else? Um, we did the fight. We did the, the three minute thing. The what? The, the three, five, the five. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That's, that's it, that's it. That's it? I can't get in here yet. Okay. Mr. Gow, anything? It was just so sad. The Vice Mayor, said, sorry. No, <laughs> no ma'am, I'm, I'm good, thank you. Where do you go to get into that? Commissioner? Yeah, I have two things. Uh -huh. um, one is, um, and I don't know that we need to put it in here, but I guess I just wanted to say it. Um, Sometimes we have issues of huge significance and we have a chair of one of our boards that is speaking to us and then they're held to three minutes and it just seems too rigid. And um, I usually don't do that though. Okay. I mean, so I, I guess usually don't put if it's if, I, if I, it's part of the staffing like if we're mm -hmm. let's say <coughs> I don't know Blue Jays mm -hmm. and finance board was get or budget mm -hmm. finance boards come to give us I, I don't I, I I okay. always look at Rebecca. She right. looks at me. So we don't need to clarify that. No, I, I the, never do. The mayor has the option to yeah, no. provide for a board. Discretion. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to talk about that because I – and the other thing, I didn't know when the best time to, to mention this was we had discussed um, or talked briefly about how we do our minutes and um, just thinking maybe this is a chance uh, to talk about that a little bit. Um, making for briefer minutes. I know I did have a discussion with Rebecca and she had some thoughts on that and just wondered if maybe she could share them. Okay. That's, okay. That's okay. So I did bring a little bit of information thinking that it might come up. And so what we did was we did look at some of the communities close to us and then put them against our minutes just to see where we stood. And just um, in Safety Harbor, for um, instance, for 2020, their average minutes were 11 to 12 pages. For 2019, there were 10 pages. For Largo, 9 to 10 pages for 2020, 20, 15 pages for um, 2019. Uh, Clearwater, 19 to 20 pages for 2020, 15 to 16 pages for um, 2019. But you can tell yeah. all 20 or less is approximately what the averages were when we looked at throughout the entire year and, and made an average. So for, for the city of Dunedin, for 2020, for the work sessions, ours are an average of 34 pages. And for um, 2021, there were 29 pages. For the regular commission meeting, there were 23 pages for both 20 and 21. So one of the things that I, in our discussions um, with Commissioner Franey, that I thought that might, something that maybe we'd be willing to try or at least discuss was <clears throat> that for the work sessions, could we go more towards an action type minutes? Because those are where the discussions, a lot of times those discussions, they're not required in the minutes. It's just the action that actually comes out of it. Uh, what we can use is the staffing from the, um, the staff member that gives the, the summary. And we go through the summary. A discussion was um, occurred. And the consensus or the direction that was needed, and that can be broken down. And that should really help with the, those, the length of those minutes. And then um, for the, I still would recommend um, verbatim minutes for the regular commission meetings where um, the public hearings are held and um, th those types so that we still have for right. those, those big decisions um, that they still, you can still have um, minutes on verbatim. And that's just an idea um, that I had um, run by Commissioner Franey in our conversations that I thought it maybe it would be a good balance and um, help with some of the lengths of, and I, I say that our average is 34, but you know sometimes that we have really they're short. More and sometimes they're less. We have, can have really short meetings, and they're eight or ten, and then you know we can have up to 56. As a matter of fact, are you talking to these cities as to what they're doing, <clears throat> what steps they're taking to keep their minutes so small? I mean, most of them are just a very summarized or action. And and I've talked a little bit with um, the city attorney as well on the needs and the requirements f to make sure you know. Um, verbatim are not required and a lot of the conversations when I've looked at like the clerk's manuals and different things like that you know conversations are not you know it's more the action of what the intent at the end is and so um, I yeah. think you know 
I love having those minutes, so I have a hard time giving them up. Well, we've come so far, you know, with a video. We do a video. I mean, really, if you video. want to go back and do research, that's the best way to do, go back and listen to the, all the nuances of what God said. I definitely which don't want to. Which is what wanna, we just did, yeah. which is what definitely. I just did for the yeah. A, B, and C Street mm -hmm. thing. Yep. I watched four very long yep. meetings. Yeah, and that's how you get all the kind of the details. I didn't look at the minutes. Right. And, um, you know, it's, you know, how many, are, who, who reads the 50 pages of minutes when we approve them? I mean, I usually do, but. <laughs> you do. But I usually go to my name and make sure my statement's yeah, yeah. coming out right. I don't no, read no. everything because it's too much. That's and, usually what most of us do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I wouldn't ever, I don't want to go back to summary because I think summary is what got us into verbatim. If I remember correctly, Deborah, you may have some recollection of that. But. What happened back then? I, I, my recollection, I know it was like. It was all, there was just a couple commissioners and it had to do with the accuracy of what they were saying. And I think when you start to summarize, you'll get into that. Like, that's not what I meant. You summarized it incorrectly. And I think it just kind of took off. And at that time, of course, you didn't have, we didn't have the, the video. video stuff wasn't as good or fine. We'll have right. video forever now. I mean, right. Like, so yeah. I just think that it's kind of changed. And, and, and I do think it's extremely labor intensive. And I, I love the idea of, um, you know, protecting the public hearings, making sure we got all the verbatim on that. And, and you know, I think we could always say if we have a specific issue that's going to be Go right, back and do minutes. Just say yeah, we yeah. really want minutes for this one, you know. Yeah. Something like well, that. you're going to, uh, can I just use, jump in to be sure. sure being precise about a couple of terms? Because I know we've talked about it up here before, and you're absolutely correct. The legal requirement under the Sunshine Law is to have written minutes. Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, the common question I'm usually asked is, hey, we video all these now. Do we really have to have written minutes? And the answer is yes, it's a Sunshine Law requirement. But the clerk's absolutely correct. The Sunshine Law does not require a verbatim transcript or a verbatim um, or recitation of the minutes. What the Sunshine Law requires is that official actions taken by whatever body is having minutes taken of it um, are included in them. So um, some of you may be familiar with corporate minutes, which are yeah. effectively the same way. So that it doesn't, you know, I, you've used the term, we'll keep it verbatim. I want to be clear that while you all do a really great job of keeping very detailed minutes, yeah, they're not verbatim. They're you're not, not here as yeah, a court reporter not. keeping a verbatim transcript. And so, and, and so when you said, oh, and we'll say the times that we want minutes, well, we're always going to have minutes, but yes, yeah, no, 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 when no, you I want that, more but... detailed minutes, maybe of the discussion, I think is, is, is also <laughs> a fine balance, him. but you know, um, that those are the legal standards. So as long as you, are, as long as the clerk is preparing minutes that accurately re re reflect the official action taken, that's the le that's the bare bones legal requirement. And then anything you do from there is really just what you all want and what can be helpful to your community. That's why I give the observation about video because usually I'm asked, no one reads these anyway. Why are we spending so much time preparing them? Or sometimes when people make corrections to the minutes, they think it's a validation or a confirmation of what was said. And truthfully, they're, they're nothing more than a corporate document for the corporate records of the city. They are not um, underscoring the veracity of the truth of what some people may say in the meeting, if that makes sense. So anyway, I agree right. with it, what's been said over here um, about the, the minutes, for example, for the first meeting for the Tuesday meeting, I think that would be a, a, a step, a, a good step, if somebody else doesn't have a, a real problem with that. If I don't think I do. I, I guess the only thing I would... So there's video, right? But do you also have sort of a separate taping that you... That's what that is that goes to your minute mm -hmm. person. Good question. Um, and the reason I ask is, you know, technology breaks. Mm -hmm. This is my backup right here. Okay, I so I just want to make sure that they're, you know, what happens if, um, you know, I legislator Granicus blows up? This goes actually. You know, that I just. Mm -hmm. And you have, I was going to say, you also have portable. I've seen the clerk bring portable okay. backups to other meetings that aren't in this yeah, specific yeah. facility. Correct. I think that's. And a we're good, only talking about ours. No, it's a good point, yeah. though, because I think I was doing some research way back and there was a couple spots where there was not a video. So I assumed something was wrong and we didn't have a video right. versus it, you know, because all of a sudden there well, was That's a why video. I'm asking. And I think it's a great question. You want to make sure we have it. So. 
Correct. Because we did have, if you remember, maybe six, eight, ten months ago, we did have quite a few problems. Um, yeah. And but we always had a recording. It, we may not have the video part of it. Right, which you we, don't have to have as long right. as you can hear what was being but said. But we always had the recording part, portion right. of it. Correct. Because yeah. this does not go through I legislate. This is strictly a, just a recorder for me that I keep. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm okay with your suggested changes. Everybody else? I am. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner? I have nothing else. Um, the only other thing I wanted to bring up, because <clears throat> we kind of touched on it on Tuesday, was the um, when the meetings are held. We have it in here written as the first Thursday mm -hmm. of the month versus the first Tuesday and Thursday. So sometimes you end up having three meetings in a month, you know, three work sessions in a month because it'll because it's not written first Tuesday and first Thursday, which I think is so much more clear for everybody. Well, it does say that the commission meeting is the first and third Thursday. Right. Right. And the work sessions are the are Tuesday the prior, right. which is, if it just said the first Tuesday and Thursday, it would be, because it's not that way now. You could go, like, you could have, like, sometimes in May, you might have, one of those longer months, you, you're going to get a work session, you're going to get three work sessions in a month because of the way this is written versus saying the first Tuesday and Thursday. On, on any given month, you've only got one first and one third. I know, I but that's for Thursday. If the first Thursday of the month is the first, I hear what you're saying, Mayor. I think I think it just makes it more clear by saying first Tuesday and first Thursday. <clears throat> I did take the time to go through the calendar that we just did mm -hmm. to see if there was like major change. Um, like, okay, look at this. See, August 30th, mm -hmm. September 1st. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Versus if you said the first yeah. Tuesday and Thursday, it would be here, 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 here. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It's just, to me, it's just consistent and not confusing. And I think the public would understand first Tuesday and first Thursday of the month. So much easier. Well, are you, and I know we're only looking at one particular year, but are there, are there kind of be months to where it messes, I mean, either way you do it, right. it's not perfect, I, I, but all things being equal, it doesn't really mess anything up here. Like, I'm not talking about for this coming year, I'm talking about for future. We already approved this. We already went through our calendar, but I just think it makes it so much simpler to understand. So for me, um, I mean, before we make the change, when it would be good for the first official year we'd go to that to just look at a mocked up calendar and see does it do anything crazy, you know, and then make the change. Because so, it probably makes sense. Yeah. But I just so, like to see the, yeah, well, you know, before we kind of throw it up in the, did, did you do it for 2023 though? I did it for the one we just approved. Yeah, I was just, I was talking about when we'd actually be putting it into effect and how that affects how it goes against <laughs> the holidays. Like we, you know, we we're already making all these adjustments for holidays. So you almost want to pick something that's going to actually help us in that regard. You yeah. know, I don't know, just my thought. So, um, cause I have the 2022. I just, yeah, that's what I have. And I wanted, I actually wanted to take the time, but I just didn't get the time to go through 2023 and say, okay, does this give us more conflicts or less conflicts in terms of some of the issues that we had? So. I think you're going to get conflicts. No yeah, matter probably. What. That's what I saw when I went through it, mm -hmm. but you are more than welcome to, to do that. But then that means we have to come back and talk about it again before the resolution gets done. So can we go ahead and tentatively make that change but everybody get maybe rebecca can put together a 2023 calendar and that, there are four and send months it to that everybody. would be affected in 2023 okay meaning there are four months in 2023 <clears throat> where the first of the month begins on a wednesday or later so there are four months what months are those march or sorry february march oh well, i gotta <laughs> <laughs> and write them down. I was just counting. Yeah. They would be February, March, 
And it's going to be different time. every year, too. I mean, that's what you have it to is. understand. It, there's going to be changes no matter what. I think all things being and, and equal. I guess that's my, my question is just we're, we, were, we have an issue, so we're going to make a change that really isn't solving the problem. It's just. So there is not, no solution to right, the problem. Right, so why are we making a change now? Because I think it's more understandable for the public, <clears throat> for the clerk's office, for me when I'm thinking first and I'm always thinking first and third when it really isn't. Tuesday, when it really isn't. Tuesday. I just, I don't know why we did that. We didn't do it for any particular reason. We just. I, I, I might have an idea why we did that. Why? I think we maybe did that because we weren't sure we're going to continuously have a, a Tuesday. Oh, the meeting. Tuesday. Yeah, you're right. When we created the Tuesday, it, it was like, I think we weren't sure whether we we're going to keep, but we, we know we can't afford not to keep doing our Tuesday meetings. So, <laughs> I mean, we'd never get anything done. I actually had a question um, it, to further complicate that just a little bit. I actually had a question and I, I didn't ask it. I decided not to. Um, should we actually be constantly scheduling that Tuesday? I know we wanted that Tuesday meeting, but but should we, you know, we just automatically do it now and we schedule it? I I don't think we can live without it. Do you? Yeah, I, you Ever, know, I think, Jennifer. I think that's our our really workhorse meeting. It I is. I mean, I think that's where we really gear up for anything that will come before the commission. What was it, John, you said don't do away with Tuesday? Is that what you're suggesting? No, no I, was, I was just saying that um, one of the reasons why I think we did it the way we did it is we weren't sure we were that, always going to have that, a Tuesday right. meeting. The, the public, uh, we presumed, and the public thinks of a night evening meeting, not so much of a morning meeting, uh, to, that input to me. No, you're that. probably right, John. I think I think we... We were doing a lot of testing in 2016 and 17. When you came in, you were you had to help with all of that, and we we weren't really sure we would keep up with the second meeting mm -hmm. every week or every other week. So I do think you're right on that, John. But I, I think we see that now. So to me, it just makes complete common sense to say the first Tuesday and Thursday of the month. It doesn't matter whether you leave it this way or change it. It doesn't solve our problem. You're correct. We're still going to have to make changes. The only thing it helps with is clarity. It's very easy to say first Tuesday and Thursday of the month, not first Thursday, first and third Thursday, and then the Tuesday before. People are like, okay, so you mean the first Tuesday, right? I mean, you automatically think that way, so... So the sense of humor. It just, I was actually just looking at the 2023 calendar, and it's so funny because uh, Mardi Gras is it will it will it will absolutely push us into a conflict with Mardi Gras, yes. and it will and then it turns out but Fourth, it's Fourth of July is on a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm fine. It's if you want to put it as a proposed into the new thing, and <clears throat> why don't we do that? And, and then every, think it through a little can more. A we can always flip it. The 2023 calendar. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to make your life difficult, but can you give it to us both ways or figure out some way to... Mayor, just for a sense of humor, if sure. I may, <laughs> what would happen if we just simply said that when, it's, when the Tuesday does not land in that given month, without making it complicated for anybody, we just don't schedule a yeah, meeting? Like, kind of like how the election's worded, the first Tuesday after the first Monday, right? Isn't that... Oh, you just made it all kinds of complicated by saying that. <laughs> That's how our that's how our U.S. elections work. Right? Yeah, well, don't yeah, make, we don't, don't get me don't started. Follow anything on the federal <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was just no, no, I know, yeah, I know. They, that reason you're why, trying to get rid of meetings over there. And the reason what ends why up they say first Tuesday after the first Monday is so that it doesn't fall on a Tuesday that's up in a holiday. Right. Yeah, or that that is yeah. But uh, also what hap what we're seeing because we're going to talk about it again Funny. tonight. But what we've seen a couple of times in the last six months is when we don't have those big public hearings or quasi-judicial things on a Thursday, we pile everything on the Tuesday and we get rid of the Thursday meeting. We've done that several times in the last six months. It, it just happened to work out that way. It wasn't planned that way. They were all scheduled, but we mm -hmm. used Tuesday as the workhorse day, as you, as you classified it. So I wouldn't want to get, ever get rid of a Tuesday. Yeah, I mean... Um the only problem with Tuesday, of course, is when you when you work Horse Tuesday, we don't have a lot of think time, and we and we don't give our city manager a lot of 
get the behind the scene questions out of the way and it doesn't bog the meeting down. But I get it. I mean, I, I can't imagine how we'd do without another meeting too. I just, I wish it could be Wednesday and Thursday, but that's not gonna happen, so. Um, yeah, I mean, because that's my biggest issue with the whole thing. It's like you're, you're cramming, and, and, and when, you, when you, in the old days, um, you know, you literally had more time for the manager to meet with the commissioner. They'd have a lot of questions. They'd get them answered before Thursday, and it helped the meeting. So. But see there, mm -hmm. I already, I can read Rebecca's mind over there because you know what she's been wanting to do for a long time is she wants agendas in on Thursday instead of Friday. And if that were the case, you could do agenda reviews on Fridays and have more time. Yeah, I know. She's about to die over there. Oh you have gosh. to do that right after I took a big sip of soda because I'm looking at Jennifer and like, <laughs> you know. But I'm just saying. I, I, know. It, I know. Maybe it's not the meeting, our meeting that gets changed. Maybe it's this timing and schedule that people can discuss to make that less frightening. I'm not looking at Jennifer because she, you know, the laser beams are gonna. <laughs> gonna well, watch, be sure and watch the tape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it should. I'm not going back on that either. You know, no. <laughs> My poker face just like completely. Yeah, it out. just went right out the door. I saw it. <laughs> See, I'm acknowledging what you want to do. Don't know that it's ever going to happen, but I'm acknowledging it. And it is about giving you guys more time. So yeah. It's not well, it's true case. because we're working all weekend. But you you spend your weekend looking at it. And it's you can't get your questions. I mean, then you're in here like if you if you're late in the day with your meeting on Monday. Yeah, there's like mine. no time to get anything that you you know, it, you know. So it's a who doesn't have any time? You're saying I'm sorry. Questions if she has. Well, if questions. you have questions, so say if you have if you, now I have mine Monday mornings. Yeah. So but still Jennifer's mine's meeting with the rest of you the rest of Monday. Mine's towards the end of the day. Mine's towards the end. I, and, I, and I have the brilliant and and uh, I know you all want my time slot. 9 a.m. So yeah, she's got a she's she's trying to start up a new week and and then she of course yeah. of course it's enjoyable for her I'm sure to talk to me but um, <laughs> but uh, but you know if if I'm I sure didn't jump excited if I, every Sunday night John just thinking about that if, if if we you know Sunday fun days for her right yeah. Yeah, if we don't get the information until late on a Friday and we may have something else planned and we have a weekend going on and then yeah. boom it's nine thirty so sometimes it's very early in the morning to get to do that but then she has also has to come in and do that and she's with me at seven ten fifteen which so I'm sure you, she you finds can't really delightful. get your I do get the follow up stuff going <laughs> well that's another problem though but it is what it is. <clears throat> I love my place at the end of the day. I like mine where it is too. I love it's, it because well, it gives me plenty me. of time to look sometimes. at everything. And sometimes if I think I have questions, I'll even, if I know I have a big question, sometimes I'll text her or email her ahead of time, FYI, or I'll even call her on her lunch break. Just, you know, if I know I have a big, mm -hmm. that's something that she's not, cause, cause usually you're right after me. And you know, then you're done. How do you go get a question answered? Mm -hmm. It's four thirty-five o'clock. Right. Well, if if and staff is is wonderful at responding. They know that I'm briefing all of you that day, yeah. and so they know they need to pick up or answer right away. It's on agenda item, and and as you know, as you know, you've all been very uh, gracious as far as stopping the agenda briefing while I send the email to ask the question yeah. to get it back as quickly as possible. And then towards the end of the day, if it's something that, you know, substantial that you've requested, then I will send the email to all of you with the answer or any attachments that you want or anything like that. So um, it, it, it is, we are, you know, it's difficult for all of you. I know that you don't have um, that briefing on, you know, on the Friday and, and the weekend essentially to think about mm -hmm. it and do your research and then, and then come in on, you know, on Monday and even take Monday to research as well. But again, it is every time we talk about moving it back uh, to Thursday and then briefing on Friday, we are still, as you know, um, those agenda items, and they're usually larger scale agenda items, and we're still working on them. A lot of times we need an agreement signed, we need you know, whatever it is. Typically with staff, we brief on the agenda on the Wednesday, and then everything's due by the Friday. So, and then I will typically spend like Sunday afternoon just going over it again to make sure I'm ready for Monday morning. So- With John, uh, with John. With John, yeah. <laughs> 
Exactly. <laughs> but you're working on the weekend too, is what you're well, saying. Well, just like all of you. I mean, you go over it and make sure that you, you, you know, and I would certainly, if you go over it and you have those questions, I'll be happy to shoot it off. And for staff, I would say for Monday morning, you know, they work hard enough, unless it's urgent. But um, um, is there, and I'm just really have put no thought into this. It just, we're having a dialogue. Is there any benefit to getting the Tuesday agenda out a day earlier? You still, it, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change when we talk to you. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that you should have two phone calls. Uh, that's not what it, it, never mind, I answered my own question. It doesn't really help. So it that might really help you. Answer your own questions too. It might, <laughs> it might help you. you prefer that all the time. From right? a workload and flow, but it, it doesn't help the question part or the timing of the question part. However, I am going to note that we've had a lot less of the famous blue sheets. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, those used to bedevil us. I mean, yeah. we got we had so many blue sheets. You couldn't even keep up with which blue sheet went to which thing. They even had to change the colors with that one. Yeah, I said, do, I said do chloral, yeah. do anything. We're sick of the They don't even call them blue sheets anymore. They're called supplements. Yeah, but I mean, really, we have really gotten a lot better on the supplements. A lot better. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So usually they're from me. Yeah. No. 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 no they're from all kinds of people. I, trust they're me. only from me if some if because someone's asked me to rush and get it done. No. I mean, <laughs> we used to have a blizzard of blue sheets, and it was like if finally you were trying to figure out what time you got this blue sheet, because then you would get another blue sheet on the same issue, but they were, you know, there was something else you needed to look at, and it's gotten so so much better. So well, that's much because everybody's harder. afraid of Rebecca if they have. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I bet. It's good to have a good, healthy <laughs> kid. Right. I think a, it, I don't mean to jump in and summarize, but I think it sounds like this is a potential 2023 issue, but not a 2022 issue because, as you mentioned, I looked over and I think 2022, there aren't any instances where we're. Yeah, there is. Oh, there is. But I'm not oh. saying we should. We've already approved the calendar, so I'm right. not saying we should change that. But I mean, I mean, we already had the dialogue. I'm. I'm just saying. Let, but, let's at least put it in there for the rules and regs, and we can make a note that it applies to 2023. But Rebecca will send out a calendar for 2023 and show show us what it looks like. Both ways. So yeah. When you were saying add first Tuesday, were you talking about adding that into subsection B2 under work sessions? Or uh, um, let, let me get Because they cross-reference each other. So I want to make sure that the change that I bring back is what, or that we work on with Rebecca is what you all Yes, have. for work sessions, it shall be scheduled on the first Tuesday, first and third Tuesday of, of the month. Or I just want to make sure I had yeah. clarity on which one. Okay. Well, you also sort of sank it. You, you did a good job because you you followed the language of the commission meeting. You know? Right. That's what I'm saying. It just should be simple and very clear to the public. Okay. All right. So you, you get the consensus direction of the changes, and you're going to bring well, back a red line well, for us. I'm gonna, I want to make sure that Rebecca looks at it, too. But what the I actually left in the second part of the sentence, so it just says first and third Tuesday prior to the regularly scheduled commission meeting, because I think that is important, because otherwise yeah. you could end up with a, Tuesday, a Thursday, Tuesday, which I don't think is no. the intent. Um, but yes, that I've, I think I've captured all of the comments to be circulated in the resolution. Okay. All right. So that's, that's done. That was a long conversation. <laughs> Perfect one for a Tuesday. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. My, my. Li liaison appoint. Well, oh, that was the other thing. That was the other thing, was flexibility on when this stuff is scheduled, because this kind of stuff should be on a Tuesday. It, really it should, should not be on a but Thursday, except during election year. Because in election year, you have to wait until the new people are seated to do this. <laughs> but there should be flexibility. And that was the other piece that you know, where it says certain things that happen during the course of the year, during election year. I just think we, we could have given her flexibility where these little things could have been on Tuesday and we could have knocked them out and 
These are not for a Thursday night meeting. But if we go to that first and third, then it would never, because the work session would always be the first meeting of December. Oh. Right. So okay. Well, part then of it covers my, it. That was part of our issue. process when okay. we discussed this well, there was you because go. I had mentioned yeah, that I didn't like this would be on a Thursday. This, this is but all the Tuesday charter specifically meeting. states that the vice mayor selection has to be on the first meeting in December, and all of these other items are always done at the same time. So that's why I had yeah. to choose tonight and not Tuesday. on the 30th. So that's gotcha. why Perfect. that happened. And so that was part of the thought process. Well, there going you go. Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah. Um, first meet, full meeting of the month. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you know, and again, my sympathies to those watching the meeting now. <laughs> well, yeah. This, this, every community this is does dry this. stuff, isn't it? It's there, dry. Every community, yeah. Very dry thing. Every community does this. Hey, and you all have gotten into the place. Place. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and it's not like we can sit in a conference room and talk yeah. about it because it's quasi judicial. I mean, not quasi judicial. Yeah. It's sunshine law. Exactly. Yeah. We understand. And, I, and I'll just say, too, there, I've, I've seen boards get into fights over their rules of procedure. So this was not, you. this was a very good, productive discussion. Oh, good. So. Good. <laughs> good. Okay, so now we'll move on to the committee liaison appointments. I have to say something before we get into this, okay? I, ha I laughed my full head off because, you know, we were asked to do one, two, and three. And I thought I was our doing, I was being funny by doing one, two A, and two B instead of doing one, two, and three. Yeah. Deborah said, I want all three of these. <laughs> and so on the list, it says number one under all her three. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, none of us can follow directions. That's something so simple. Well, wait, let's not say none of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my God. Gosh, I, that was pretty bad. I, Boy, it, I know, it says number one, number one, and number one. And I was like, I, I, I laughingly emailed Rebecca. I said, didn't she pick one, two, or three? And she forwarded me your email. It was like, I want all three of these. <laughs> So she couldn't make her, the choice for you. So she just put number one on everything. So I just thought it was so funny when I saw that. But we did all kind of, and I, I don't want to take away from anybody here in case they want to fight it out, but we did kind of say that we would let Deborah keep her things, you know, through the end of her term. No, I'm against it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm for giving her the three she wanted and maybe another. Yeah, well, let's yeah. give her more. Come on, let's load her up. I, I, I'm with you, John. Yeah, the only thing I was going to ask you is, you, do, do you really want to keep doing the school thing? Well, you know, Jeff has been so active, and, and Jeff... Well, that's why I was going to... You know, I you know. totally appreciate all that you've done. You know, I, I see, you know, that everything you've done with the bands and everything. And, and the arts. Y yeah, so, you know... It, it's up to you. I, I totally understand that. Well, uh, you've been very, very... But I know you want to keep the Arts Center and the Historical yeah. Museum. Yeah. That I know. That, that's very kind. Thank you. Uh, what was driving my decision actually was uh, PSTA. And I, I really wanted to stay uh, yeah. with, with PSTA. And, um, and what, yeah. what's, what is there? Yeah. That's your number one. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and, and well, in the discussions good. with the school, I didn't realize that that was a county fu function, you know, because I was thinking just Indian schools, that was more under the local. Well, you know, we it's, local under, county, it be, so. it's under a county function, but it really isn't. I mean, it is about it's, our school. it's about our school. It yeah, because, right. you know, it's very hard. Which you tend to go to everything when it comes to the schools, as mm -hmm. well as you were a teacher. Yes, and, and, but in, in looking at this, that was my thought process, uh -huh. right? So I, 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 I didn't want to choose number one for school. Right, right. And then number one for PSG. Oh, right. we'll see. Like she did. Right. Yeah. yeah. Why not? She did it. And so I don't know what to do with that. I, well, I'm, do you want to? I'm doing next year. All I, ones. I mean, do you want to do it? But I think I, she's saying she's okay with giving you know, it up. You know, I, I, like I said, I've, I've very, I, I, I want to do PS. If it means giving up PSTA, no. I don't. So I don't if think it, that's what it means. To, you know, the one I'm, one I'm one system that, works really well. Then what Deborah, but, what's but, Deborah going to do? And if she's doing that, and I know it just ended up being Deborah and I on that, but if we're going to, if, I just don't want to take over without Commissioner, Torn and Commissioner Freeney. 
weighing also in. Also saying that's okay because they might now want that position for the schools. It's not on the list. That's not what they, but if we're going to change something on here, I at least wanted to have that dialogue. Well, you're not as well. really changing it. I know. I know, but. It, the only reason it's up here is because you also have to kind of keep watching what is happening at the county level and are they doing anything stupid yeah. that's going to affect our, our own local schools. But it's not like you ever really communicate with them unless there's a singular issue that's out there. You, you see more on Facebook um, because of some of the issues. You know, I've just followed it. But, um, you know, I think we, we are always in a direct conflict with either the workshop or with the workshop, I think, to go to the county school board. Yeah. So I couldn't do that. So, um, you know, Jeff, I, I, it's, you know, you can give me something. And I, I'd, I'd love to have it, but I, I don't want to. Take Commissioner it. Franey, are you okay with him having I have no school problem with thing? You. John, are you okay, okay with him with taking over as our school liaison? I have, I have no problem with that, based on how you feel about it. I have no I, problem. I mean, then I have no problem. Okay. You are it, Jeff. What's Deborah going to do, though, then? Oh, uh -oh. my God, really? <laughs> now they're going to give he me doesn't something. have any other regional one, though. Uh-oh. I knew There's that was Bay Regional Planning Council. It's 10 o'clock, second Monday. And I, wouldn't I thought that was yours. Yeah, yeah you is. see nobody signed up for it. No, it There's is. a reason for that. Well, I just assumed that I'd continue, you know, so. You didn't put, you didn't put one, one, one? Well, I mean, you know, do you want to do I really it? want forward Pinellas. I keep putting in for it, but I respect the mayor when she's ready to let it go. Yeah, um, I want to. Ready to let I'm it just go making. I'm just repeating, repeating, repeating. So by the time she steps down, well, that's how I'm doing. I'm the like, historical like, museum. Yeah, same thing. I mean, like, I want it. That's why I, I want to be on TV. it. That's my number one thing. You know, I want the to be only on. thing I have. So I'm okay with the Tampa Bay Regional Planning. You're okay with it? No, I'm okay with staying as a representative um, because. I mean, so I mean, unless you do you want to do it? I mean, if you want to do it, I'm good with that, too. Um, Might be kind of fun to have your last year. Hoorah, unless you want to really focus more on the historical stuff. Um, well, you know, I'm so it, but I didn't need to tell you all that on under the arts that. Um, well, it's not before us anyway, but the the North Pinellas yeah. Cultural Alliance yeah. really during the pandemic just sort of dissolved and now we're coming trying to get it back together but I have you know that's been pretty much shut down so yeah. um, I don't think yeah. it's on here no that's part just part of your art yeah. stuff you yeah. know yeah um, we should let him talk. but remember I have historic preservation oh. you do mm -hmm. so that is my third sort of third yeah well, do, John, do you are you interested at all in the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council? No. no. Okay. I would. So it's, I, would, I would have to take my telephone along to do my agenda review. Oh, well, right. it does conflict with my agenda review, and it is part of the issue. But usually, Deborah, Deborah's kind enough to switch. Switch. Yeah, or I've done or, or I do it late. Times. Or I do it late. I've done that a couple of times with, yeah. mm -hmm. with Jeff on certain things. So that's that's not. All that's right. Not so it's John. I mean, it's down between the two of you then for the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. I know Mo's been looking to get rid of it for a while, but we forced her back into it last year, I think. And, and I'm and I'm good. I'll you know, I'll stay in there right now. More for more. Are you okay with that or do you want it? I don't know if I really want to it is it, You need to start ratcheting down. That's what you need is to it do a and lot having to fun. get there in the morning with the traffic and everything. It's not hard. No, but I mean, I'm come almost my whole last year because I, I did it for a year, then Jeff did it, then I retook it, and it was almost, I've, I've been to one live meeting because we mostly did it virtual. Oh, yeah? So, you you know, Are but you now. Are doing it virtual? No, 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 we're, we're back. And so of course, now. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm uh, on the cusp. All right, well, let's hold that one. You, you two keep thinking about it. Okay. All right, so right now we have the PSTA. That's Commissioner Gale's number one. That's Commissioner Torngo's number three. Um, when's your term up, by the way? Your PSTA I think term. Because, you know, usually we let people stay I mean, through their term. Four? I was going to say I can check, but I've got to pull up another file. <laughs> I, 
I think it's I think that there are three-year appointments that are shared under the interlocal agreement. And it might be 23. Okay. Because it did usually... start with me. Let me well, can I just make yeah. a quick comment? Uh, there's just two, <clears throat> sure. of, there's two of us signed up yep. for it, right? And he said he really wanted to have that. Yeah. So. You okay with that, Tom? Yeah. Okay. How about that? All right. And I know that in Suncoast League, Commissioner Torngo wants to continue to do that. And then Commissioner, that's Commissioner Franey's number two. Yeah, and I'm gonna, you know, John, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get a little more active in that group anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah, you, know, you can. But go. again, yeah, you know, yeah, but you, right, you, everybody right, can right. go. You I need to get more engaged us in that. To go. Yeah, I mean yeah. to to. But now, what about your term in Fourth Nose? Is it yeah, I'm not, just I'm in? not budging. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, based we, on what you just, just said, I just looked at it and I'm like, wait a minute. No, my term's up. I mean, my terms yeah. just got reappointed. No. So does that mean it's open for no. grabs? I'm Look just got rea Stop it. Uh, I know. I'm, no, I actually you're doing a great job on there. I'm not trying. September or something. I think we, we talked about it in I, September. I'm 100% joking with yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. So, so. I'm, I'm ready when you're done. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So again, under under county things, we're back to we're back to the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. You know, is it? I don't even know who's on that anymore. You know, I chaired it a yeah, long time I know. ago. I mean, I have. I, Deborah, I'm fine to keep it. Okay, I'm, not, I'm keep fine it. to keep it. Okay, it's Commissioner fine. Franey. I mean, I feel like I need to, you know. Be, yeah, no, that's it's good for you. You know, we, I've been involved in their whole planning thing for the no, you know the next good. conferences and all to. that. Right. So, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll. Okay, so down the we'll local. See who's new on the, the, on the, Mayor, the if, yes, yes, sir. If this yes, takes sir. very long. Can I just make a suggestion for your evaluation? We got a gentleman over here sitting on the back wall who's waiting for the next subject, and he's been sitting there all night. Oh, we're sorry. We're probably almost done, though, aren't we? Well, what what is subject he, is he waiting he, he's for? He's the travel policy because it's produced by finance. So he said he's okay. Oh, he's, we're sorry. He's, Why does he have to be here for that? <laughs> well, I bet. I bet. This is just been the scintillating. Why does he have to he be here? He is a comedian. <laughs> I don't understand why he has to be here for that. They put together the report. So if there's anything you want okay, to like, report. Let's not start that getting into questioning okay. the city manager's threat. Okay, so aid to community organizations, that shouldn't even be on here anymore, right? Nope. We got yeah, rid of that. No, that's oh, nothing okay. now. Okay, so I'll update that. There's yeah. no Thank representative. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, so Dunedin Cares, I know Commissioner Tornga, that's his number one. Um, you did it a couple of times, but he, you've had it for a year or two? What? Yeah. I've had it for a year. A year, okay. Um, the Fine Arts Center is Commissioner Kynes. The museum is Commissioner Kynes. I, I wanted I, to Dunedin Fine Arts. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be gone. No, I'm you're all kind of all signed up right next year. I, just, I, want, I definitely there. wanted to do the. I definitely want to do the museum hilarious. after Commissioner Kynes is gone, and I put my little note there. Ah, oh, they're be they're going to be um, tripping me or something, you know. When, okay. After she's gone, so, it's like, how can we get rid of her? All right. So we have. So are we okay? With Commissioner Toringa doing um, another year for Denny and Cares, it would be a second year. What's this? Denny and Cares, Commissioner Toringa. It would oh, be yeah. a second year. I put it down as my number one. Yeah. I care. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. So we've got You're Deborah good. on fine You're arts. Good. Okay. The golf club. Um, we've got Commissioner Gao. Now he's he's been that. What is it? Two years now. Uh, three. Three. Three, but I mean, do we really want to? Do we want to change while we're going through this process, or? I mean, uh, you know, I'm fine with Jeff continuing. That's right? the yeah. only reason why I, I kind of went another year because it's probably right. going to be yeah. right last year. Gotcha. Okay. And the board gives you rave, re John, rave reviews for him right. too. He just stayed at the bitter end, and you're there, and you're <laughs> engaged. It's awesome. Okay. So we'll. we'll We'll leave it there just because, I mean, we're in the middle of this. Yeah. This, I, I, you know, I whatever that's... facility plan. Um, <clears throat> Historical Museum, we got that. Uh, and then we got the liaison, Commissioner Franey. Your should still be that, Honda. I think. Yeah. That's your number one. And then the Scottish Arts. I put it there. I've, I've been there a year. I, and, you know, I also thought that at some point, Commissioner Gao, you should actually take that on because, I mean, my God, you work every one of those events and you're at every one of their meetings. Um, but, you know, I'd like to 
I, I'd like to just keep it and switch next year when I go fighting for the historical. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Because yep. there'll yep. be an opening there and I can yep. just switch. Mm -hmm. Providing nobody fights me. I may fight it. for golf or Scottish next year. Yeah. Say, you know? Right. So. Just, just All right. Notice. So okay, so for the know. locals, we've got. It, just let me make sure I, we're okay. Commissioner Torngood Dunedin Cares, Commissioner Kynes, the Fine Arts Center, Commissioner Gow, the Golf Club, uh, Commissioner Kynes, the Historical Museum, myself for the Scottish Arts, um, and uh, Commissioner Franey, the Blue Jays. Is that everybody okay with all that? Mm -hmm. Okay, you got that? All right, I guess we can I have a motion to approve those appointments? So moved. Second. Second. Commissioner Franey and C Commissioner Kynes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And then we have the annual review of the travel policy. Well, can we take a 10 minute break? Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> poor lesson sitting back. Did you see the look at you? <laughs> I didn't know that's why he was here. I had no idea we had a staff he, member I, here for that. I thought. I, thought, <laughs> I really didn't know. Just like I just that. thought he was just hanging. But yeah. Commissioner Gao, it's hard to tell when you're joking with that mask on. So that was <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well timed. <laughs> right. All right. So what? What's your change here? Is it? Is it? Are you talking about the mileage? No, oh, Dometer. No, that was last year. What, what's the change? No change. There's no proposed change. There's no proposed changes. <laughs> there isn't. <laughs> then what the hell are you doing here? There, there I just wanted to be just in case you wanted to have any changes to the commission, I, I wanted to be here to. And they would prepare the report. You're you report. poor thing. So what report? I asked Les to be here. Okay. <laughs> That's right. It's what report? Oil, what report are you talking about? She thought so we'd be done an hour ago. I don't know what you're ago. talking about. What <laughs> travel report? You get a quarterly report. Oh, the quarter. Oh. An hour ago. You know what? All right, she made you do that for nothing. That's right. Just I saying. I think he did a great job. He did. Yeah. I did. And yeah. you look great. Too. What's this? Yeah. <laughs> but I do sorry. have a suggested pretty significant change. Okay. To amend it. What is it? I'm kidding. <laughs> Just for a moment, why did you think you sat there for something? Less? No, but I do want to remind you. After the first of the year, you're going to need to put the Blue Jays trip on the agenda at some point. Oh, okay. You know, to decide who's going what. And okay. Well, we'll see what's happening with the uh, lockout. Yeah, well, yeah. True. I know. I know. So, Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. For thank you, Les. That was a great report. See you later. <laughs> yes, good job. All right, did anybody else have any other changes on? Nope. Um, specific approval. Sure. I'm just reading that budget limitation section on the last page. That city commissioners shall not exceed the travel expenditure amount budgeted in the commissioner, commissioner's line item travel account. Shall be individually responsible line item adjustments between. Okay, we, we changed that already. Yeah. Line. Okay, I wanted to make sure that we had a statement that we could trade off money if we needed it. All right. Yep. I don't have any changes. Yep. Anybody nope. else have any changes? <laughs> you got to do the odometer. Yeah. Uh, well, we, it's just whatever the mileage is from the IRS, I think, is what we do. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. That was changed last year. Last year. Okay. So it's not the odometer. It's just, you know, when you say clear water. I mean, I don't do this. They do MapQuest, and that's how yeah, they do it. Yeah, and that's how they. That's the best most. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. That's good. Perfect. Yeah, but it says here shall be reimbursed at actual miles traveled rather than according to map mileage. Well, that's we've been doing map mileage for years. Forever. I don't turn in a mileage log. I think that's for local though, isn't it? Just because uh -uh. I don't know. Uh -uh. I'm glad he's here because I was a little confused about that, but the I thought everybody else thing? felt yeah. I, I All right, was. so we need to change that language. Yes, I mean I think but we've been using map mileage for. As long as I can ever. remember. That's what we did last year. Yeah. It says or. It says or. Or. Yeah, we, we it says or. I thought, I thought yeah, I thought that. Uh, that or. What do you mean or? Shall. Yeah. It shall be reimbursed at actual miles rather than according to map mileage. Mileage incurred by a city commissioner or charter official outside the city of Dunedin for the purposes of conducting official business, city business shall be reimbursed at actual miles traveled odometer or by map mileage pursuant to 112.0614 statute. Uh, what section ordinance. are you reading? I don't have that. 20-39 that was approved last year. No, what well, section? What, what do we have? Oh, Commission mileage reimbursement. Section 
section, section one. Okay, I'm reading section seven, commission mm -hmm. mileage reimbursement. It does not say what you just read. Right. 20-39. Of the resolution. 1950. I'm just telling you what. You know that we need to adjust the rule. No. Oh, that's what we changed last year. Okay, yes. well, oh, we okay. need to, what we need to do is have a, compl a complete resolution that has all the changes in it versus two resolutions like that. That's very confusing. Well, the, you've got resolution 1950, which was from 2019 and then 2020. So, right. So yeah. can you bring back a resolution that has all of the same things on one resolution document? So we don't have two things? I mean, that happens all the time when we change our, it's just not clean that way. I don't care when. I mean, it's already in place. Well, I mean, I th it's, why don't we just stick in a war? Call it a day. Well, I don't know why we, di why we didn't do that to begin with. You can just do a re on your 2021 resolution, it'll be one document. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I think that we did that because we were, yeah, but we'll, we'll do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then it will be or. It will be yeah. or. Yeah, it'll go to that language. Okay, great. So there's nothing we have to actually vote on here because we're not making a change. We'll need to bring it back. <coughs> okay. Who, deci so, who, decides, who decides whether it's or? Does it it's, already, it's already done. No, I'm sorry. I'm, when the person's filling it out, you can either use one or the other. <laughs> Odometer or map mileage. So it's either or. He's asking who decides that. Well, I think it's you filling it out. I mean, I think most people anymore use MapQuest. You know, but beforehand you know what the mileage are, mileage is, and you, and you use that. Or if you wanted to use your actual odometer and and compare it to MapQuest, you could do that too. But most people would use MapQuest. Uh, and, and I think up uh, to the individual is what you're saying. Right. Right. And when we're filling out the travel form, as you know, we we start with with what it is where you're going, and then we attach the MapQuest if that's the way you did it. And then when we finish the travel and sign off on it. Then, then it's all attached and it's very clear for the record. I asked because I once tried to fill it out. Just, I mean, I just looked at my mileage when I left and came back. I only had a couple this year, and uh, well, uh, we, we didn't do it that way. So it, I'm okay. I mean, it, it didn't bother me what everybody wanted to do, but I just thought I'd ask who de who who determines that. Okay, I'm done. Okay. So then we have the proposed agenda for the December 16th meeting, and. As we know, the Sterling Hotel has been tabled. So now we, we have resolution 2130, which is just the approval of the citywide multimodal plan. We've already reviewed the plan. We're not reviewing the plan again. It's just uh, giving the final vote. Mm -hmm. And then we have an agenda, and I know mm -hmm. Jennifer had one other thing. Mm -hmm. We do. We need to, um, before the end of the month, approve the extension of the zoning in progress for the <clears throat> Overlay on the south side. Okay. So we will have. But that. that's just an extension. It's not a major discussion about the overlay, Correct. right? Correct. That, that's the resolution extending the zip. Um, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for requesting that, Jennifer. Now I don't have to. You're welcome. That's okay. Great. So <laughs> my question to you all, and I have already asked Jennifer this question. I'm in agreement with you. Is we you cancel this and move everything to the Tuesday meeting? I'm for it. I'm for it. Yeah, I'm totally. And then it just, but I will say. It's a pretty packed meeting, so it would likely run long, like it, okay. like it did the other day. I'm sorry, but I think I think, I think it gathering good. in one day is so much better than trying to do gather twice. I'm totally for it. Okay. And yes. Too. When I talked to George Kinney, and I'm not sure you may have talked to him as well, he did mention, um, due to the size of that 14th meeting, if that does happen, that he was okay with moving that resolution 21-30 to a later meeting, that first part of January, to try and help with the length of that 14th meeting, and it wouldn't hurt anything. But that's entirely up to you. Yeah, and I'd rather Jennifer. get it on the record and go ahead and do it on Tuesday. I don't care if we go to two o'clock again. I'd like to get that zip on the on the record. Well, the zoning no, in progress. I, I, no, no, no. No, no, no. I, I, I think I, we, I think you're talking it, about the master plan. The extension. The, what, oh, what, the extension. Rebecca, no, Rebecca is talking about the multimodal master, master, master plan. plan. Just the approval. Enroll into January. Oh, it's I got it. But sensitive. we're not. But right. this the is zip, time. No, yeah, is the zip is time sensitive. It must yeah. go on the 14th yeah. Yeah. then. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, the only thing that would 
affect that is, you know, on the 14th, we were going to bring back up the information and we need your direction on the ORC CRC question. So as long right, as you all will be prepared there. for that as well, I do, I, I can go until we go to ORC that day if necessary. So, um, and we have ORC at 430. <laughs> yeah. So please, that's, that's my stop time. <laughs> I know that that's not what we're looking at, but no, if no. we needed to go light longer that day, I'm just letting you know that it also works with, with my schedule. Yeah. So, do you want to move the multimodal out? We can move it out. Yes. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So, with the changes just discussed, and the additions just discussed, can I have a motion to approve the revised agenda? For Tuesday, November. For the 14th. December 14th. For the 14th. I make the motion. Second. I hope we second. For the revised. For the revised of the 14th, which we've already December approved. December 14th. So, uh, Commissioner Kynes and Commissioner Tornga. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes unanimously, and then I guess I have to have a motion yeah, to cancel motion the meeting. To can and I'll the make 16th. the motion to cancel December 16th. Okay, Commissioner Kynes and Second. Commissioner Tornga, cancel. 16th. Is this part of Commissioner Kynes' last hurrah? Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Yep. Hoorah. Hoorah. <laughs> okay. Anybody have anything else that they want feel that so necessary to talk about? Did we approve the agenda for the 13th? The 13th? Okay. The 14th? 14th? 13th of January 2022. No. We don't have that's that, not on that our... is on the agenda for the six for okay, got the it. meeting. I was that one was meeting canceled. ahead, I apologize. That's yeah, yeah that's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> it'll have to be up on this. It'll have right. to be added. It'll be to added. That. I was right. Yeah, it, that will be <laughs> no, added. have to be on the 14th. The 14th. I was going to tell you to pay attention, and then you were right. Yeah, you'll see. Yeah. We, so, I normally okay. do if we cancel. <clears throat> yep. So I will amend that. I don't think we have to do that. I think have it's good. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> she would have done it anyway. She would have added it anyway. But she wanted to amend it. <laughs> okay, does anybody have anything else? Uh, Mayor, I don't I'm know. They're chit chatting over there. <laughs> Sorry. Do you got anything else you want to talk about? Um, I do not, Mayor. Thank you. Yes, sir. If I may. Uh, yeah, just as the uh, school liaison, just wanted to remind everybody that the musical theater is putting on Elf. Oh, Actually, no. they opened yeah. tonight. I couldn't be there. So it's tomorrow at 7, Friday at 7, and Saturday at 2 p.m. Oh, matinee. You. So for anybody who would like to go see a wonderful musical and support the schools, I'd appreciate it. My there kids you go. love Elf, too. But don't, they're not they're not near this. Don't way. forget to give him the information on that MPO subcommittee, too. The school. Um, the flyer you gave me? Yeah. The MP No, no. MPO subcommittee that the school liaison does as well. Remember and that. It, well, it's it, the they meet court transportation. Oh, but you know, this past year they haven't met. They now, really haven't. But met. I just make sure she, he's aware of it. Okay. And you need to um, check in with Phyllis, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because you'd be doing the principals' meeting. The principals' meeting. Mm -hmm. MPO subcommittee. Yeah, it's the School Transportation Safety Committee. Yes. Is what it's called. That is a subcommittee of what the school liaison does. But it really they only meet quarterly and they haven't been meeting. I think there was a subcommittee on here. I could somewhere as well. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. An email or something. All right. Everybody good? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this City of Dunedin government meeting. If you'd like to review any part of this meeting or watch any previous government meeting coverage, you can watch these meetings online anytime through the city's website, DunedinGov.com. Stay connected with everything Dunedin. Follow the city on this channel and on the city's Facebook page, through Twitter, and on the city's YouTube channel. 
Thanks again for watching this Dunedin Television production.